Hey everybody, we're doing a quick Q&A with Christian singer-songwriter Jason Gray. He's joining us today from Nashville. We are truly blessed to have him perform at our Jolly Jamboree December 16th at 7 p.m. He has just released his current record, Order, Disorder, and Reorder, which came out in October. So for those of you who don't know the real Jason Gray, tell us about yourself. What does making music mean to you? Huh. Tell you about myself. That's, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot to tell, I suppose. Not because I'm all that interesting, but because I'm, I'm old. I've been on planet Earth for a while. But, um, you know, uh, I would say the reason why I make music, um, my journey with that, I suppose, began when I was a little boy. I, I, I well, and also here at the top, I should, I should let your people know that I have um, a speech handicap. So, so, so I, I, I may struggle with that a bit. And I just want to, I just want everyone to know it's not because of Jenna. She's not intimidating or mean or anything like that um it's just what i do so but um when i was a little boy uh i didn't grow up in the church um but i did grow up on the road with my mom's bar band and uh what that would look like when i was five years old is you know uh we would hop on this uh old converted school bus and uh drive all around the state of Minnesota to all these bars, haul in all the gear. And then my mom would uh, would stick me on a stool at the bar while she'd go on the stage and sing, you know, Heart and the Doobie Brothers and the Eagles. And she'd stick me on a stool at the bar so she could keep an eye on me while she was working, you know. And um, I remember uh, I hated all the smoke. I complained about the smoke a lot, but, you know, uh, but there I was with the, uh, you know, a bottomless glass of root beer, a five-year-old hanging out at the bar, and I had my Star Wars action figures. So it was a good life, you know. And and the tr 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 the 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 tr the truckers who were at the bar, I think they liked having a little boy hanging around you, so they'd hang out with me and talk s Star Wars and teach me how to play pool and all that kind of stuff. Um, so uh, so even though I didn't grow up in the church. I grew up around a lot of music, you know, so um, I suppose it's not really a surprise that the first time that I heard God speak to me was through a song by my favorite group, Simon and Garfunkel. <clears throat> I, was, um, I was about five years old and uh, my parents were in the midst of a, a very ugly divorce and I was kind of caught in the middle. And we were living at my grandparents' house and I didn't have my own room. I was sleeping on the couch and, and there was just, and my grandpa struggled with alcoholism. So there was a lot of chaos in my life, you know, but uh, the Lord knew how to cut through all of that um, to speak what he wanted me to know in a language that he knew that I could understand and receive. And, uh, and I loved Simon and Garfunkel. That was the first music I fell in love with um, and I remember I was on an errand with my grandpa and uh, and he stopped at the liquor store and it was the winter so he kept the car on while he went inside and so the radio was, was on and, and uh, I'm just hanging out there in the car and all of a sudden I hear this song by uh, this group that I love Simon and Garfunkel and the song is bridge over troubled water and uh i'm not sure if you've ever heard that song but the lyric is um oh, yeah. when you're weary when you're feeling small when tears are in your eyes i will dry them all and it was like um i felt a presence in the car with me being like Psst, hey i want you to know that this is how i feel about you like a bridge over troubled water i will lay me down for you you know and I believed it and I didn't you know know what it was or have language to describe any of it you know but but uh, the language I, I would use now is I, I believe that I encountered the spirit of God in that moment you know and 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 he was speaking to me and and um, 
one of the things that I love to tell people about that is, is, is that uh, what I'm grateful for about that experience is that um, nobody was talking to me about God. For sure, they weren't encouraging me to interpret songs spiritually, you know, so like, I don't think I could have made that up at that time in my life. So I think it was an authentic encounter with the Holy Spirit, you know. And the other thing I love about it is that it, uh, it stands as a reminder in my life, you know, that, that, uh, that God is able to make himself heard and known with or without our help or permission. And for me, a little kid in Minnesota, in the land of the Lutherans growing up, you know, um, the first time I heard God speak to me was through uh, an agnostic New Yorker Jewish pop star named Paul Simon, you know, um, and I just love that, you know. Uh, so, so music to me has always been one of the ways that God speaks, and I, I just knew from the very beginning that I wanted to be a part of that ever since I was a little boy. Wow, that's that's incredible and truly powerful as well. And it just shows that like God works in mysterious ways. And yeah, definitely glad that He reached out to you through such a personal way as well. Yeah. Um, thank you for sharing. So, yeah. um, going back to your album that you just released, what was yeah. kind of the inspiration behind Order Disorder and Reorder? Yeah, you know, um, I uh, somebody once told me that they felt like um, my songs were like handrails to hold on to in the storms of life, you know, and that was very meaningful. I, I, I hope that's true. That's what I'd, I'd like to do, you know, and <clears throat> I know for me personally, um, I, I, uh, I didn't have any kind of redemptive understanding about disorder or chaos or when things are falling apart, right? Um, disorder was only ever something to be rescued from. It was squarely in the bad category, you know, and, um, and I'm sure you've, experience this you know when 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 uh when you're going through trials when the bottom drops out of your life you know it can feel like everything has gone wrong and and that can be very anxiety inducing right and then when we're we're anxious and afraid um our our, our mind is scattered and uh and we we aren't the best version of ourselves right and we make a lot of we oftentimes make bad things worse in that state of mind, you know, so I, I'd hoped that I could write songs that would help people when they're in those situations to, 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 uh, to calm down and have a sense of peace. And, um, and to understand, it was helpful for me to understand, you know, that, that, uh, you know, um, I'm being transformed when I'm moving through the process of order into disorder into reorder. That's how we are transformed, right? From, from order into disorder into reorder. And order is, is when things are going the way that we expect them to go and want them to go. And, and order is, is good. And we spend a lot of our lives trying to create order. And that's exactly right. That's what we're supposed to do. But the only problem with order is that we can love it too much, right? And we can become protective over it. Um, and, uh, and it can kind of harden into like a, 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 a rigid way of thinking about the world. And we stop learning anything new. And that's the problem of order, right? Is, is, is that if we love it too much, we stop learning anything new. And that's a real problem but don't worry because chaos is always lurking around the corner right and that enters the equation and breaks up our order and reminds us that we we're not as in control as we think we are and our knowledge is not as sufficient as we'd hoped it would be and, and disorder can be 
painful and confusing and heartbreaking, but maybe it breaks our hearts open enough that something new can get in, right? And that's the beginning of reorder, you know, and, and, and I'm sure you've gone through this and, you know, that we go through hard things and we come out the other side stronger and wiser and kinder. And um, so order, disorder, reorder is as good of, of language that I've heard to describe that process, that process of being made new, you know. So, um, so the new album explores themes of order and themes of disorder, and then it closes out with songs of reorder. So, wow, that is so beautifully said, and in such a unique way. I don't think I've ever heard it put that way, but again, it's it's so relatable to everyone. Yeah, it helped me to not be anxious or resentful in times of disorder, but instead to become expectant even, you know, like, like, oh, wow, everything's falling apart again. That must mean that I'm in disorder, which means I'm about to learn something new that's going to change my life, you know, and that has just helped me to not lose my head in those moments, you know. Yes, yes, definitely. That's really reassuring when you think about yeah. that as like a yeah. process. Right. I really like that. Yeah. So um, for you, what does it mean to serve the vulnerable? Yeah, you know, um, when, um, when I knew that you guys were interested in having me, I, I, was, I, was, I was happy to say yes, you know. Um, and that comes from, you know, there, there's, I don't wanna be negative or unnecessarily critical, but I'll say this, sometimes I'm, I'm concerned. I mean, like, yeah, I make music. And so in my industry, in my genre, there's this um, uh, rise in the emphasis of, uh, of worship music. And that's, that's just fine, beautiful even. Um, but sometimes the danger in it can be that, uh, that we can, we can enjoy our experience. Okay. I can enjoy my experience of worshiping God, but no real significant worship has taken place. You know what I mean? So like, it's kind of like this, uh, I used to say, um, I could write a love song for my wife. And she might enjoy that, you know, but she'd like it more if I washed the dishes. <laughs> you know, like if I really want to honor her, that'd be the way to do it, you know. So, so uh, as we, as we um, value the idea of worship, um, I want to, for me personally, I want to make sure that it's rooted in something tangible, you know, if, 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 if the goal of our worship is to bring pleasure to God, okay, well, how can I most bring pleasure to God? And that brings me to um, those passages in Matthew chapter 26, right? Uh, which I think are so interesting because uh, Jesus paints the picture of, um, of what it could look like at the end of our days when we stand before God and uh, the, the the picture he paints has 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 God asking us questions, and it's so interesting because he doesn't ask us any theological questions, right? He doesn't ask us, "Did you believe in the virgin birth, in the inerrancy of Scripture, in the resurrection, in infant baptism?" No theological questions. He asks us instead something so much more simple and complex at the same time, right? He says, when I was hungry, did you feed me? When I was thirsty, did you give me a drink? When I was sick and in prison, did you remember me? Did you come visit me? And he says, whatever you did unto the least of these, whatever you do unto the poor, the powerless, the vulnerable, he says, it's like you were doing that unto me. I took that personally, you know, and in my life, I think, you know, there's <laughs> Jesus has given me so much 
and he's done so much for me and there's no way that I can pay him back, right? I, I just, I'll never get there. I can't pay him back, but it seems to me that the, the closest I can come to doing anything for Jesus, for all that he's done for me, is to care for the poor and the powerless and the vulnerable as though I'm doing it on, on the hymn, you know? And, and we know that God's heart breaks for the poor, the powerless, and the vulnerable. And so in some magical way, when I care for the poor, it's like I get to minister to the broken heart of God, you know? So, um, so caring for the vulnerable, um, uh, I understand that as, as, as my most meaningful and significant act of worship. Wow, that was, again, that was beautiful, beautifully said, and that's great. And that's really what we're all about at Join the Journey is really yeah. empowering those in um, in need that don't have anyone looking out for them. They're yeah. often forgotten, and it's just so great to, I feel like I'm blessed just working for a nonprofit yeah. that, I, that I can do that. Absolutely, for. yeah. So. And, and, and to remind somebody that they're not forgotten. I mean, gosh, that, I'm sure you've had experiences. I know I've had experiences where, um, you know, I, I was, I was struggling with, um, there's an event that I'm, I'm doing soon that I felt like I was supposed to do, but I didn't know how, how I was going to pay for it. And, and, in COVID, you know, like I can't be on the road like I've always been. So like I, I wanted to obey and do this thing, but I was, I was, I was anxious about, but I can't afford to lose any money, you know? And, um, it came up in a conversation I was having with a guy a couple of days ago. And he said, you do what you got to do. And if you fall short, call me and I'll, 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 I'll write you a check. And that simple thing, I felt so seen by the Lord in that moment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it gave me so much courage and peace. And we get to do that for people, right? When we, um, when we allow ourselves to be the hands and the feet of Jesus, we, 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 we remind them, you know, you're not forgotten. He's carved your name in the palm of his hands. He's, he's, He's thinking about you, you know, so that's, that's holy work, right? <laughs> Most definitely. Yeah. Yes. Well, Jason, thank you so much for, yeah. um, for doing this and taking the time. I mean, I feel so uplifted and you're just such an authentic person. It's, it's great to sit down and talk with you. Um, do you have any final thoughts for our audiences out there? I don't think so. I'm I'm uh, excited about the event and and and, yeah. uh, and 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 encourage people to to really pray about getting involved and and, and uh, I know you know these are weird times. A lot of people are out of work, but um, I I I want to live my life in a way that that hope is making the decisions in my life rather than fear, you know? And I think that's a good thing to keep in mind as, as people pray about being involved, you know? <laughs>